Hello and welcome to day four of the Free Cheese Game of the Year 2016 Awards. I am your Joe Dix, joined by Mark Augustiniak, uh, Matt Selner, uh, Dash Ramsey. Hey, I feel refreshed, guys. <laughs> ah, me yeah. too. Yeah. That's a brand new day with a brand new set of categories. Today, we're going to be voting, arguing, screaming, continuing our yeah. Night of Screams 2016 uh, with best single player. Most innovative, favorite industry moment, best DLC or expansion, and last but not least, best narrative slash story. As right. with all of the other days, anything we talk about here, or rather anything in the world, is up for spoilers. That could be games from the year 2016. It could be Justice League coming out November of 2017. <laughs> it could be, uh, you know, Soviet history, 19th century. Uh, we might spoil that too. Russia won. They did. The world. All rise the Bolsheviks. Yep. Long live the People's Revolution. All right. Well, spoilers. That'd be a great yeah. Wolfenstein game. That'd be Ooh, a great Tetris game. That would be awesome. There was. <laughs> That's the next Wolfenstein. Uh, Rammstein. Yeah, <laughs> There was a singularity which kind of dabbled Boo! with some weird, yeah, some Your, weird, uh, Russians? yeah, All right. a lot of uh, Vladimir Lenin stuff. Which is that. cool, yeah. Uh, Beta, spoilers. Oh uh, well, yeah. Um, Batman's parents died. They did. <gasps> That's true. So did Superman's. Oh, poor guy. Martha. That's why they're friends. Oh uh, yeah, Martha. 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 How uh, are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Um, we're having great weather out uh, today too. <laughs> oh, the weather outside is weather. It was like rainy, sunny, hot, cold. All of them above. Yes, no. And below. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of below, we have something cool in our first category that we're voting for today. Oh, are we? Oh yeah, our first category is best single player, and the nominees are Uncharted Four. Doom, Hyper Light Drifter, Final Fantasy XV, The Last Guardian, Darkest Dungeon, Oxenfree. It's tough. I'll start. You go for it. We can get rid of Darkest Dungeon. All right. Ooh, was not expecting that. Not gonna argue with you. I love the game. I'm still playing it. Not. It's not. Not gonna end up in the final three. It's not now. All right. All right, guys. I don't know if Final Fantasy needs to be in the best single player. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Because it is a single player experience, but it feels like it's not. Yeah, and it... I wasn't expecting that either. I don't know. I don't know if it needs... I just don't know if I feel yeah. like it needs to be in this. I agree. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Gone. All right. Uh, I'm leaning into Uncharted 4 for this. Leaning? I'm not. Really? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> but I'm more leaning into Doom for this. Oh, okay. Uh, because are you, you are a one fucking man in Doom. Yeah, one and fucking dude is a good way to put it. Yeah, like... You're a single as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> Like, if, I, I think if, if what we're talking about here is best single player campaign, like the thing you can sit down as one player and play through, like what a fucking ride Doom is. True. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I There's other ones on this list too, but... Okay, so let's run through this. Yeah. Uncharted 4. Yes. Has to be on this list. Yeah. Yes. I agree. Can't Doom. Talk about it. Yes. Yeah. Has yeah. to be on this list. Hyperlight Drifter. It's, it's probably one of the tough. weaker ones. You think it's one of the weaker ones? I mean, it, I think it deserves a spot, but I love that game. But there's, yeah, but, but but in comparison to these other games, yeah, um, it might have to get cut at some point. Yeah. All right, The Last Guardian. <sighs> I can't speak to it. Mark, <laughs> what's your gut say? Does your gut say it's I, on or off? I think it's the one. All right. And Oxenfree. I think that's the one we can fall off. 
You think? Yeah. You sure? It's it's not as gameplay mechanics. The okay. the, the the other games on this list are going to be good story, yeah, and good mechanics okay. and like right. just clever gameplay. Like it's for what Oxen Free does, it does it really well. Right. It's it's not changing or reinventing gameplay in any type of way. Okay. So right. that's why I, I drop it off. But right. up, most up due respect to that game. I would pick Last Guardian over Hyper Light Drifter, only based on how much I wanted to go back to a game and keep playing it and seeing it through. I didn't beat Hyperlight yet. As much as I love it, I uh, just uh, Last I, Guardian was more important to me at the time. Like, I had a higher priority. I fucking beat the shit out of Hyperlight Drifter and loved every minute of it. And I really want to just go back and get everything. I want to go back and be able to collect everything. But um, I could definitely see what you're saying about Last Guardian. The I think every aspect of Last Guardian is really geared toward, you know... The experience that you're having, and even though Hyper Light Drifter has that, Last Guardian probably does it better. I mean, yeah, like whether it's like single player or multiplayer, like I know like exploring can be utilized in different ways, and I think for Hyper Light, it, it's more of like, a, hey, you can go wherever you want, you make your own kind of path with this, whatever. Mm-hmm. The narrative is there, but it kind of takes a back seat. When I feel like narrative should take a front seat when it comes to a single player experience, yeah, I agree. So I mean, I mean it's, it's yeah it's great, but just when it just when it comes down to it for this category, um, I don't know if this is too meta, but I I I gotta go Doom again. But I I think just the idea <laughs> that <clears throat> it knows it's a fucking video ass. Yeah, video like game. well not Doom. even that, but like the fact that like you are the one man, and this is a single player category, and like Doom you are the Slayer. guy who is just yeah like, you are a fucking badass. So and if you, you go like too it. literal, like like there are testaments. I literally, you. you're the only dude in this game. Yeah, yeah. No, I get what you're saying. You're I, taking single. Yeah, like you're yeah, yeah meta. And I don't mean like, to do that, yeah. but it kind of works. It does. But no, I will say, it's Doom <laughs> gameplay hands down for single player yeah. way better than Last Guardian. I will yeah. give it that. Sure. You rip and tear, like it feels great. Oh, it feels so good. It feels kills. so. It's, the glory kills are amazing. It's yes. metal as hell. Like, They're exactly what they needed to be. <laughs> Yeah, like, Last Guardian overall, I think it's just very, it's, yeah, like, it, it is narrative heavy, but it's through gameplay, so it's yeah. it, it's unique yeah. in that sense, Yeah, but Doom, man, it's just, it's well polished. Doom rules. Doom's a it's, really good game. Man, and, and it came out of nowhere. Yeah. I, I mean, would, I would vote Doom. The, my only problem with it is the ending, kind of lackluster, but nah. the gameplay itself, <laughs> I love. Yeah. I mean, like, the last, very last boss fight isn't as great as the second to last boss fight. <laughs> All right, fair. One turns into two. It's so stupid, <laughs> but it works so well. It's so good. <laughs> I mean, that, but, like, that's not much of a gripe, you know what I mean? It doesn't, know, it doesn't set it back. Yeah. Just I vote Doom. Doom. I vote Doom. I was on the fence of either Uncharted 4 or Doom, so I, I you, don't... I knew where you were. <laughs> <laughs> so... my, my, thing with, you. my thing with Uncharted 4... <laughs> Four versus Doom. Mm-hmm. Doom, I think, beats Uncharted Four in a gameplay perspective. Okay. Yeah. But the story takes the backseat. Yeah. And Uncharted, it still has very solid gameplay. Yeah, I, I kind of contradict myself with that. Yeah. It has very solid <laughs> gameplay, but then, or like, uh, uh, it has solid gameplay, but like its story is in the front seat. Sure. Just, and then, you know, between the two, like they kind of cancel each other out in that sense. But yeah. I have no issues awarding Doom best single player. So we still have four though. Yeah, like. I would cut hyper. Oh, do I do I need to defend yeah. un, Uncharted? Like I, th- I think I last say, Guardian. If I need to start defending cut, Uncharted, no, I'll I, hop I think, in that I think last, last Guardian deserves to be a runner up at least. All right, just for what it's worth. I all right, I got Doom, so I'll I'll take it. Yeah, we'll we'll give up hyper late. I know. I <laughs> dash and I know. Uh-huh. All right, cool. Best single player goes to Doom uh, with runners up Uncharted Four and The Last Guardian. Ten minutes in, not too bad. Nice. Let's right. jump to most innovative, or if we're from a different country, most innovative. Innovative. <laughs> Nominees: PlayStation VR, the Darkest Dungeon stress system, time manipulation in Super Hot, and Prompto takes pictures. I forgot to add one. Yeah, Dash is adding another. My summer car. Yes. I'm put that in there. Perfect. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, the award goes to my summer car. Because <laughs> why wouldn't it? Yeah. Nobody uh, fucking. Oh yeah. What? Is this is a fifteen the... thing. No. no. My summer car is the best game ever that. made. Mm-hmm. 
Like, I almost thought that for a hot second, and I was like, oh, right, right, you Listen, showed me. Any game that teaches you how to build a car from scratch. <laughs> Literally from scratch. Literally. <laughs> Not yeah. like, oh, yeah, you need <laughs> you tires. you have to take care of yourself, like a sim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a button for giving people the finger. Yes. <laughs> what? what? Say. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it, it's literally for people who don't so know. So why is this best single player? What the fuck? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. A okay. Second. Go Doom. back. Go fuck yourself. Go back. Yeah. Um, this is a tough category. Most innovative. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, you define... Here's the thing, though. With the whole promptography... You could do that with any game on the PS4 with no, the share button. You, no, let's, let's go back to No, this is different. This is different. Let's go back I mean, I get it. There's like in-game screenshots that you can't get the angle of that he can. This is, yeah. But you're still taking a screenshot of the game. It, it's a, it is a part of the immersion of the game. I will say it's yeah. the first time that I've ever given a shit about in-game pictures at all. Like, I right. never in a yeah. game thought but about it. We there's been games where you take pictures yeah. in them already. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. innovative... Okay. I'm cool. GTA Five did this what four years? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll cut up. Snap. Prompt him take okay. pictures. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just went on the website. Is this the game right here? Yes. Yep. If, if you don't if, understand is... what you're looking at, that's the game. Okay. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I just see this. It is this awful watch, Flash website. Yeah. Watch the permadeath, like scrolling along <laughs> yeah. to the bottom. Watch anybody play that game on mm -hmm. YouTube and just um, have a great time. Die. It's yeah. So good. Or play it yourself. Yeah, because you'll die playing it too. Is yeah. on the max side? Uh, I don't know. Probably, probably not. definitely yeah. not. So why is is it, is it only because of building a car from scratch? Is that the only innovative thing about? Well, it's it's also that it doesn't teach you how. Yeah, so you have to teach you. <laughs> like, so, yeah. So I love that. Yeah. Wait, I, is this a real game though? <laughs> I mean, like, I, I feel like it's still an alpha. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, uh, yeah, damn. I don't know if it's an alpha. I'll say like I'll say like how many games can just tell you. Not to, can just not tell you how to do stuff. I know. I don't know. It's, well, that leaves us with three. I love it though. Like, don't get me wrong. I love. <laughs> I know. It. This is stupid fucking Wait. game. So fucking good. Okay. Because like general jousting was on here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Was. <laughs> was. So right. I know where you're coming from. With yes. This. Ah, coming. <laughs> uh, Mark, you played PlayStation VR, which I think is probably the winner for most innovative. It would. It makes sense, but like, what did you experience in PlayStation VR that made it seem innovative? I guess just all the different ways you play these games. It's it's weird. Like, all right, so like the game that it came with, like the I just call it demo disc. Sure. Um, some games you don't need to move controllers. You yeah. don't. You just use your head. Okay. Yeah. Like, uh, there's a game that's kind of like. Uh, kind of like Pong, but it looks like it's in the Tron universe. Uh, my use... Summer Car? Yeah. <laughs> but, like, you just use your head to move the crosshair to hit right. the ball back, whatever. Um, but, like, the job simulator, I yeah. guess. I mean, innovative in the sense that the immersion was more surreal in that, in a not realistic looking game. I almost face planted because I thought I could lean on a counter to scratch off a scratch off ticket. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. But in that, I still believed it. I don't it, know why. In that way, though, is it any different from any other VR headset for it, us to focus on the PlayStation one? Is it just the, that that's the that's the only one I can they, right, yeah. give an opinion. On. So I mean, I, so it's weird. Yeah, I feel like that goes in a category. I don't. Know, but however, you're going to handle VR. Yeah, like if if it's innovative at all, it's for its versatility on how it handles games, yeah. how you can go about it. Yeah. yeah. Even though it's not the best way right now, I think we're still in the wild west of that because I don't like teleporting to spots. I'd rather just fucking uh, yeah, walk yeah, to yeah, a yeah. spot. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want that shit. <laughs> uh, Matt, the stress system in Darkest Dungeon. It stresses me out thinking about <laughs> it. Could you define the stress system? Yeah, define. So, um, so when you're crawling through the dark, uh, the dungeons in this game. There's two things you have to worry about. One, obviously, your health, because mm -hmm. if you die, you're, you're dead. Right. However, s depending on what happens to your dungeon crawl, whether this character's attacked or, is, um, or a special attack from another enemy, mm -hmm. um, those things can cause your party to get stressed. And there's actually a meter right underneath your health meter. Um, and what happens is uh, like the hit points for the stress meter goes up to 200. But after 100, if your uh, character gets stressed at that level, some kind of trait 
is activated and whether <laughs> like they they become paranoid, whether they become fearful, like there's anything that can throw your party off, um, whether it's like them attacking without you saying them which what attack to do or whatever, or them moving in the order where they're supposed to be and really fucking up your formation. Um, but then if they get 200, there's a chance that they could suffer a heart attack and die on the spot. Whoa. So that's, um, that's a good mechanic. And it, it doesn't reset. <laughs> like the stress sticks with them th- through like the different dungeons and oh, you have shit. to you have to send them to either like a tavern to have a drink and calm down or they're religious go to a church yeah. pray like like it resets to different levels like if you were at like i think 150 it'll go back to 100 but any anything you're in between zero and 100 it mm-hmm. stays there until you either let time pass and it slowly just calm down without let you taking them to the dungeon yeah. or you you spend gold and have them recover that's interesting it kind of reminds me of um don't starve mm. and amnesia yeah. where it's like but it, it takes it a step further though like if you don't do something or take care of them enough, like, shit happens in the game to affect your gameplay and everything. Like, uh, I mean, Amnesia is kind of the weakest out of the three uh, when it comes to comparison, I guess. Because it's just like if you're in the dark long enough, things get warped. Right. Like, don't starve. Yeah, if you don't eat, if you don't take care of yourself, it does affect to a point, but you can still whatever. But, yeah, but like, Darkest Dungeon, like, it takes that, like, a step further. Okay. And yeah, I, it's... that's that's cool like, it's fucking tough I, like, I that like, game does not is that, not afraid to kick yeah, like, your I appreciate, ass that sounds awesome I appreciate the details how far they go with yeah. it yeah. for it to be long lasting how about time manipulation in Super Hot? is that any more or less innovative I've just, never seen a game do it like that I don't know if you have that not that way yeah like not that way at all I think it does make me think of the Matrix yeah. I mean, yeah I mean that's the whole game you feel like <laughs> you feel like you're taking snippets of the Matrix but it's for it to be incorporated in like strategy Rather than, like, this is a cool thing to make me shoot people better. Like, right. it's, like, that much more... It was, it's just, like, a super intelligent decision for game... Who, for the developers to have made. Like, it's it's pretty awesome. Yeah, like, I, I made that exact point when I talked about it, I think, a couple weeks ago on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, I said, it doesn't feel like a first-person shooter. It feels right. like a like a, a portal again. Yeah. Where it's more of a first-person puzzler. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, man, that I'll, I'll never forget the elevator level. That's <laughs> so fucking good. three guns point at your head. Yep. As soon as you move, <laughs> it's <was> over. <laughs> uh, most innovative? I mean, uh, I don't have experience with the VR. It seems like it's the obvious answer, but I don't think there's any properties with it either right now that I'm like, I just, yeah, yeah. I, I just don't feel like VR is at a place where I can comfortably say that it's yeah. the most innovative yet. So do you feel you're more impressed with VR stress system or time manipulation? I'm between stress system and time manipulation. I'm voting stress. Stress sounds yeah, cooler. I, it does. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, right. it's like it's a super hard RPG already, yeah, yeah. and then throw this level of to complexion add, into like, it. Yeah, like, to add such a human thing, yeah, for some reason is innovative. <laughs> and it's like I've, I've, you know, I've played rogues before where I'm just like oh, I can just push a little farther. I can just push a little farther. And there's there's like a point where you hit where you're like, oh, I'm probably gonna like go back to town, but then you get that one like power up that gets you back in the game. Like if anything, and like yeah, this like... sounds like they're just like, no, you should probably not yeah. go back yeah. into the dungeon. And, and then like it's, it's it's silly on top of it, like after like at any time, unless you're fighting an enemy, there's a low chance there's a chance that you might not make it out of the battle. Mm-hmm. At any time you can hit press on the touchpad and you can return to town. Hmm. And like no no extra damage taken off of you or whatever. Mm-hmm. However <laughs> Instead of becoming more relieved, you 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 left the dungeon. Mm-hmm. You become more stressed because you didn't finish your quest. Oh, wow. So it was like fuck. Like <laughs> it's like Damn. I can't escape the stress. Right, that's crazy. And you're just constantly. And I um, it was when we were kind of finalizing this podcast. You guys sent me a message, and I had like the perfect dungeon crawl. Mm-hmm. It, it was flawless. Everyone's stress level was at like ten or twenty, which I never have. Everyone was pretty much at full health. <laughs> I was like right at the end of the, like the boss of the dungeon, mm-hmm. and then I decided to do a camp because um, certain ones let you camp and yeah. you can like use different power ups to like calm yourself down, yeah. heal up, blah blah blah. However, there's a chance you get ambushed because oh, you're sleeping. Fuck, yeah. So I was like, oh, let me just recover because I'm right at the boss. Like I'm at the last room. Fucking got ambushed. <laughs> 
Everything just went to shit. Stress. <laughs> I got uh, stress levels went up to one hundred. My party was half dead. Damn. My one dude ended up stressing out, having a heart attack, and then I got to the boss battle at my healer because my healer was the one that had the heart attack. That's fucking ironic. Mad. Sounds great. Oh god, it was the worst five minutes I had in that game, and I wanted <laughs> to throw my controller through the window, but I keep playing it for some reason. And we're gonna vote for it to be most innovative mechanic. So that's that's, yeah, yeah. I what about Thumper? As far as like a VR game or like just like the rhythm? Uh, the rhythm horror mashup of genres. I didn't really like Thumper, but just that was something that popped into my head of just like hmm. a weird thing that was new. Yeah. I nah, know. fuck that game. No, the, I no. I like the animations, but... No, I like the... I, once I kind of got the... Because I played a couple levels. Yeah. Um, I got the rhythm part and I kind of liked it. But it felt right. Like something just didn't... I don't. I don't think it, if it was trying to go for the horror thing, it didn't feel like uh, a horror. Yeah, I didn't really get. Confused. I got like elements of it. You know, like you get some like Lovecraftian style bosses. That, but... yeah. All right, I say Darkest Dungeon stress system. We yeah. voted on that most innovative Darkest Dungeons stress system with runners up PlayStation VR and time manipulation in super hot. That's a weird category. It is super hot. Ew. Super hot. <laughs> uh, let's move to favorite industry moment. Our nominees are the Nintendo Switch reveal. She thought I farted. No, no, I no, I, don't. I was preempting. Yeah, uh, I know. Oh, yeah. so we'll get there. The Nintendo Switch reveal. Uh-huh. Sony's E3 press conference. Project Scorpio. Mm. Del Toro tells Konami. Fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) And a Naughty Dog sandwich. Mm. Uh, Which refers to the PlayStation experience where we opened with a rad look at the next Uncharted Mm -hmm. uh, expansion or standalone thing. And then closed with grown up pissed off 19 year old Ellie. (laughs) Um, She's going to kill us. Switch. Everyone. No. Yeah. (laughs) Switch. Has to be it, <laughs> right? I mean, it's the most anticipated. Sure, it's the, it was the mo- it was the most like I was frustrated by the last few weeks before they announced it. Like anytime Nintendo said anything, it was like shut the fuck up, Nintendo. Like, <laughs> I know. Now you like, and it was annoying that they actually had to preempt every conference before. It was there won't be anything about the Switch. Yeah, because You're right. because that's all anybody wanted to actually yeah. fucking hear. So uh, I mean, well, I mean that's just, but that's not the reveal itself, though. It's not the reveal itself was a big reveal. What I don't like is that the rumors were right. <laughs> no, I do like that uh, because it that was the a surprise, though. No, the surprise was that it was all fucking real. <laughs> that was what was surprising because because it was like yeah, but like, I'd rather have found out just by watching the trailer, not I, by I agree. Hey, guess what? This is what happens. No. Fuck you, spoilers. I agree. I agree. I agree. <laughs> it would have been way more rad if we would have just woke up one day and been like, "There's a what? Yeah. What? Yes." Yeah. Yeah. But what was crazy is that in the middle of it July, crazy, right. it came out and it was like, "Yo, just this is what this is," and we were like, "Really?" Okay, I guess so. And, and then we started true. going, well, yeah, I guess I could believe that. Yeah. Well, I guess if it had that, it would probably have to have this. Yep. And then you have all these assholes who came out and they were like, yeah, and it's also this, and it's also this, and it's also this. And then it builds it up in your head for three months. And you're yeah. like, man, this thing is going to be the the coolest fucking thing that's ever happened. Right. I can't wait. And then they announced it and it was all of that. I mean, I will well, say this, though. Like, yeah. I... Like, I had an alarm set to wake up. <laughs> yeah. I watched it on my phone. Yeah. I was like, and it, it put a smile on my face. I, I cried. I don't, I don't care about all the memes or how crappy or unrealistic that trailer is. I, I cried. Wasn't, I wasn't focused on that. <laughs> Joe fucking cried. I was giddy as shit. Yeah, I mean, like. I was giddy. Because I was like. It made me happy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, and, like, I felt like my eyes getting all, like, watery, just like, mm-hmm. oh, man, yeah. like, I was seeing birth for the first time or something, you know? <laughs> well, no, nah, I threw up when I first saw it, but the... <laughs> I like, say, if I were moved by things like that, okay, not, yeah, like, yeah. When we're soulless human beings. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's, it's, yeah, it was definitely one of those moments where I instantly, like, my mouth watered because yeah. I couldn't give them my money yet. Like, I yeah. was like, I, where yeah. is all the money I can give them first? Mind you, this is the same day where I had to wait for the Red Dead Redemption 2 uh, trailer. That's true. Which that didn't need to be released yet, but I was still happy that it yeah. came. I mean, but... So the only, it was a good day. The only thing I will say about day. the reveal is for all that it was confirmed by it, there's still 
a fuck ton of questions. You're right. That, That's that, true. That like seem to ever be going open on. more questions. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, there's just more January. questions. January. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. But I think just largely like as a moment. That yeah, was yeah. pretty good. I, in, in the matter of that three minute clip, I went from laughing at Nintendo as a yeah. company to cautiously optimistic yeah. about their future. Yeah, yeah. It's just, just for something Nintendo, and just you know, just want him just just get it. Yeah, just get it. And it's like oh, they no. finally they finally are. They finally like, do. <gasps> Please don't suck. I mean, shit. We'll see. Uh, Sony's E3 press conference. What happened this year? It was glorious. Fucking. Uh, it was just Kojima came Kojima out. Kojima came down the stairs. A step. Of, stairs a of, step ahead of the lights, and yeah. that kind of bothers me just a well, little bit. Well, there were stairs of light, so I mean, you can't. It walk was on just. Light. Uh, Video games, yeah. Oh right, and that it, was this year. And it, yeah, and game it was, after game. That yeah. music in the beginning, game. that God of War intro. Yeah. Okay, I forgot about that. And, and just kept going. No celebrity every, bullshit. Yeah. No musical performance. Everybody from who came on stage was whoever. like, "Fucking video games. Here they are. See ya." And like <laughs> done. And you said no bullshit music. Like, and yeah. the music. I it mean, was all like, performed live by yeah, the orchestra. Well, I mean, that's that's awesome. okay. Yeah, like what it meant was like we didn't have no crowd pleasers. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> Uh, but hold on, wait. Perform. That was a highlight of the hey, 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 hey. Kanye and uh, somebody didn't perform at all, so that yeah, uh, like, was good. You know, like that comic relief in between. None of that. No, yeah. Joe McHale. No, what's her face? Tyler. Yeah, like Girlwood. Whatever. Like, there's none of that shit. Girlwood. <laughs> Actually, like Aisha Tyler. Yeah, that's Aisha great. But like, fine, but Girlwood was a bit too. Mm. When you start wearing it as a chain around your neck or has a T-shirt, I don't fucking care. It's just it was it was video games. That's what E3 is about. Yep. Hit it right on the nose. It's no, good. Still wasn't good as fuck Konami. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So what is the fuck Konami? It literally was Del Toro saying fuck Konami. Like, he tweeted, what, like, give me, he tweeted Yeah, he tweeted it. Fuck <laughs> <That's laughs> Konami. Like, hey, <laughs> fuck Konami. Like, <laughs> that was it. Like, he, there was no fucking censorship. And it came out, I think he tweeted right after the VGAs wrapped up, so that... That was when Jeff Keighley went on his little rant about uh-huh. Kojima and the hell he had been through. Yeah. And it was great. It was just a glorious moment. It was. It's just the thing that it was. It literally summed mind. up for this what, site's yeah. feelings about Konami. Yeah. It was nice for what he went through, for what happened, for what could have been. Mm. A pizza. And then, Ugh. and then to what we have now. God, they were just giving him like four it's more like, months of Metal Gear Solid Five. <laughs> it's bittersweet, you know. Like if it if it wasn't for him. Getting treated like shit, we wouldn't have Death Stranding, I think. <laughs> right. Oh. Death, and Death Stranding, we, I don't know we, what the we would have Silent is. Hills, though. We would, yeah, I, I know, I know. I, know. I love, to my like, like, I, health. <laughs> I, I love PT <sighs> till the end of time. PT, man. Yeah. What, what, a, what a two minutes I put into that game because I, I opened the door, I walked uh-huh. down the hallway, Dude. turned right, I said, nope. <laughs> that, that is a horror game. Played it sweating in daylight with my girlfriend next to me and still could barely. I was play cautious the game. to go to the bathroom. Oh, it was yeah. across the hall from me. Like, and, and horror games don't move me like that. Like I'm desensitized to that shit. I'm surprised I launched the game, quite honestly. <laughs> but yeah. the, the best part is, I, I found this. Is not only did he say fuck Konami, mm-hmm. but he linked to the Game Awards tweeting, watch this brand new 4K clip of Hideo Ko- Kojima's new game. <laughs> <laughs> like, and that's yeah. what he linked to, and just in fuck all caps, games. fuck Konami. Yeah. Can I see it? Uh, oh, shit. Yeah. So there's fuck Konami, right? There's the tweet, which is like, <laughs> it, it makes you feel good. You click on the tweety reference, and then it's, come on, Twitters. Tweeters. Uh, come on, little biscuits. Yeah, like, I have no idea what Death Stranding is, but I'm so hyped for it. Oh, my God. Death, so I'm hyped so, for it. Well, we're getting to that. We're going to yeah. get there. Yeah, fuck Konami. And then watch this new 4K clip of... <laughs> How many people have, like, liked it or retweeted oh, it? Oh, probably. 20.2 thousand retweets. Yeah. 30.2 thousand That's... likes. Like, Konami cannot not see it. <sighs> fuck Konami. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, I made video game news sites. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? They probably don't even run their Twitter. They just hired some intern. He's like, man, that <laughs> he probably retweeted it. Whatever. He was probably on his the, personal he, account. He, of course, he was probably the janitor. So <laughs> the way they fucking uh, it was me. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I think that stays in. How about Project Scorpio? I don't care. No, I don't care. I, I don't care. care it's a but I'm console, curious. but it's the weakest PC. Uh, sure. Uh, here's what I like about it: <laughs> walls are coming down. 
Yeah, I like that idea. Um, and it's yeah. not really a reality yet, so I'm going to remove that from the thing. But I, I like what Microsoft is doing. I like that they're kind of like, it doesn't fucking matter what you do. Just do it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just play where you want to play, be what you want to be. Anyway. I'm just going to say, like, the that, that the Project Scorpio, I, in my opinion, was the highlight of the Microsoft conference. Yeah. And then uh-huh. the, the reason to get rid of it. Sony happened that night, and everyone just <laughs> right. kind of forgot that Microsoft existed for those two hours. I'm more of a Project Sagittarius. <laughs> oh. I'm actually a cancer. Uh, that too. fucking dragon. <laughs> All right, we're done. That's why I didn't want to say Ooh. it. <laughs> um, Astrology. Forgot. <laughs> Naughty Dog Sandwich? I don't remember that. Okay. It... Here's what I have to say about that. Uh, you hate Naughty Dog. We know. No, I don't hate Wait, Naughty what? Dog. what? Yeah, what are you doing? I just, I haven't, I haven't, I just, I've missed that train. I know. Crash so, Bandicoot, Jack and Daxter, Uncharted, The Last of okay, Us. Okay, Jack and, Jack and Daxter is the most I've played out of Naughty Dog. No Last of Us? I, I, had, I didn't own a PS3. Uh, I'm going to get that remastered. He's got it coming. He's got I, it. I just got okay. a PS4 this year. Bruv? You let me know what you think. If Overwatch wasn't my first game I got, I would have gotten right. that. Well, so you let me know how you feel. I still need to play you, that. I know. After you Last of Us. No, here's what I say. I respect Naughty Dog. But I think people need to put some chapstick on their lips a little bit. <laughs> All right? They're not the best fucking thing in existence here. They're good. They are great, but top of the top of the top... I disagree. Was up Last there. of but, Us is good, but overall, no. But I want you to. I want you to. Okay, I, I will agree game. with you. You can't say no when you haven't played it's it. The yeah, game. and I will say this: think of another company that you can say is top of the top of the top right now, because what we have are all the companies we used to love, just not the, those things anymore. They don't exist. You go with Ubisoft. You go with. Uh, yeah, I can't say it for any of them. Yeah, I mean, you can't name a country. But literally, a country. like Konami. Or, <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I can't. Yakov names. Yeah, Yakov. All right, Yakov's one. <laughs> One for one. Uh, um, no, uh, I mean Naughty Dog has consistently put out fantastic games. They're, right. They've yeah, not I made just, a bad game, and, and with they, all the expectations going into their games, every time they always and they deliver. keep exceeding them too, I'm, which I'm is just, nice. I'm just saying their flaws need to be acknowledged. They absolutely yeah, do. Yeah. But you, when compared to what has become of every other company, it's 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 hard to say. You know what, Naughty Gut Dog? Thanks for fucking. Staying true to yourselves and putting out quality shit, like mm-hmm. it, it's it's just one of the few companies. Even that if has. you lied to so, us about the release date every time you release. So, it. is our <laughs> favorite industry moment announcing a sequel? I don't. Know. Um, it's not. Mine. All right, that you said it there. Gone. It's not mine, but yeah. That's the point I was just trying to get across. That's fair. But that was compared glorious. compared to fuck Konami compared to. Yeah, you're right. I've I've Switch. seen people weep over seeing the Last of Us two trailer. Like I've seen I've yeah. seen I saw I don't even know what I was watching. It was no, just it, like I recommend if it wasn't this, ruined like, for me, I would have been. No, like dude, like, like when I yeah. when I watched that trailer, mm-hmm. I was amazed. Like I brought it up the the last time we talked about it. Um, yeah. I was impressed just by her the animation of her playing the guitar, oh, the yeah. sound of it, every the details is is. Beautiful. The capturing of her facial expression uh, when she's <laughs> mouthing her hate speech, like I, yeah. I think for me, like The Last of Us would probably be my favorite Naughty Dog series. But like, oh, I was never enticed mine. by Uncharted. I was never enticed by Crash. They're cool. They're yeah. good. Yeah. They're not shit. I just never cared. Yeah, all right, good thing Crash Remaster's coming out this year. <laughs> <laughs> but Last of Us, I'm definitely looking forward to. All right, well. So, so we're down to three. We're down to three. Nintendo Switch reveals Sony's E3 press conference and Del Toro tells Konami, fuck, fuck you. you. So mm. I feel like Del, fuck you. Del Toro tells Konami, fuck you, is how we feel to Konami, how we feel about Metroid. It's like sums up so much how, how we feel about the yeah. video game in- industry right now. But Nintendo Switch is such a glorious like hope beacon. It's that Barry Allen, you know? It's just like, when everything yeah. sucks, he's just right there. <laughs> and, yeah. like, that's what Nintendo Switch is. He's just, he's our ray of hope. He's making sure he has the lockpicks. The only the thing about lantern. the Switch reveal is, that, that day it happened, not all the details have come out yet. Like, they didn't have that. that Don't, it doesn't matter, but think about the trailer. Just focus in on those I, three I glorious, beautiful moments. I would say it's more than just the trailer. It's what it left in your head afterwards to wonder about, too. Yeah, that's true. I was wondering how quickly can I hit replay and watch it again so I can scream some more. I was like just, Cautious optimism. I was irritated that I didn't know how I could buy it. Yeah. It was, like, all just, of the things that happened. Like, that... 
I just want to play Zelda. Because for me, like, the Sony E3 <laughs> press conference was fucking rad, but I was like, okay, it I got it. That was, I'm going to play that. Yeah, okay. and, and I like these not games. the best note either. The problem is, though, with that, that I think, the only thing I could point out about it. Yeah. Um, yes, like, it, it's great. Like, like I don't want to call it just, like, a negative Nancy th- with everything that comes up. But uh, it's kind of sad that, like, this is a good thing. Hmm. Like, mm, you know what true. I mean? Like, they yeah, all, like, they all should, true. they should always be like this. I know. Yeah. So, so I mean, I'm glad it happened. Yeah. But, like, no, but with Switch, it was more like, even. I got done with Switch and I was like, oh, uh, like, I don't know. I started yeah. thinking about like what we're going to do. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. just how we're going to play Smash and Platoon and what, like, ah, uh, just. It, it's funny because in a way, like Nintendo, it, you could argue that Nintendo won E3. By only showing one game. Yeah, yeah, I thought about that too. But here's the thing: if the Switch was announced at E3, would that have won E3 over this press conference? If they it could have if, been, if it was done right, I think it would have. Like if they just showed that trailer. If they showed that trailer, I think it would have. I think it would have won E3 because I mean, as glorious as PlayStation's timings, everything too. I mean, it is, but but no, they they would have had the timing because they don't go until after everyone else goes. That's true. They always have that. They, they would have just yeah, they would have just woke up and they would have been like, "Hey, we're gonna show you Breath of the Wild playing on our new Nintendo Switch." Yeah. Oh, you don't know what the Nintendo Switch is? Yeah. Take a look oh, at the did three we minute to trailer. Tell you that? How right. silly us. <laughs> yeah, that that would have. I feel like that would have fucking won the day. It's yeah, yeah. Now, if they had done that and then PlayStation, I don't know. And then freaking Del Toro was like, fuck Konami, like on stage live. Then we all would have died and uh, (laughs) it would have been okay. (laughs) Fucking nuked. I say Switch is the favorite industry moment. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, Yeah, I'll agree with that. All right. So, the free cheese. Favorite industry moment is the Nintendo Switch reveal. Close. Very closely followed by fuck Konami. (laughs) Yeah. And the Sony E3 press conference. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Del Toro. Finally. Yes, mm-hmm. thank you, Mr. Del. Uh, <laughs> let's move along to our next category for today. Uh, best DLC slash expansion. Um, our nominees are Animal Crossing, New Leaf, Welcome Amiibo, The Mitomo Fall Update. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yep. Uh, Rainbow Six Year Two update, Overwatch's Halloween, uh, and No Man's Sky the beta, or what? No the Man's Foundation update. I yeah, I think it's called the Foundation. Update. Yeah, I don't fucking know. Point is, go. Uh, Animal Crossing is really fucking cool. Like the fact that after what's that game? Three years old now. Yeah, it was really unexpected. Yeah, I didn't anticipate that at all. And it's actually like a really rad update. Like all the new little consoles you can get. Uh, the, the fact there's like new games in there. Like there's so much packed into this update that was yeah. $0. I have a 3DS in the game that looks like my 3DS in yeah. real life. And it's super cool. KK slider plates and all. Yeah, it's really rad. It's ugh. Scanning in little amiibo <laughs> to get... It was like, cool that they added like was it fifty original characters mm-hmm. with like R V they scan with a card. Yeah, I know. Horror. I know. <laughs> uh, it, it's weird when to talk about Animal Crossing because it's like its own thing. I know, but I think that's like a game, but it's not. That <laughs> yeah, but that expansion was super dope. Uh, this category would have been won by Shovel Knight had Shovel Knight not <laughs> slipped into next year, but. Um, I think the Mitomo fall update, while we might <laughs> not think about it, uh, I think that something rad that came out of this was uh, <laughs> what we learned about Mark. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we also got Torby. We did get Torby. <laughs> my little buddy. Kicks. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark. Uh, decorated his whole room with Isabel posters uh-huh. and then uh-huh. dressed up as Isabel. Shit. It was very questionable <laughs> about the pictures. <laughs> yeah, when I say pictures, I mean like... They were kind of lewd. Like were there some fanfic kind of moments happening? All of them uh, were. It was borderline. Okay. And the fact that... I kept it tasteful though. You get one... <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you get one wall spot for posters for uh-huh. free 
It's any uh, picture on your phone. Any picture on your phone can be added there. Mark went ahead and spent a dollar per extra slot to Jeez. get all of them unlocked <laughs> right. so that it he could fill them with Isabel. You're living proof that Nintendo's marketing is working. Mm. I'm keeping them alive, right? <laughs> I'm the reason why we're getting a Switch. You're the sole reason that we're getting right. a Switch. True. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can take Mitomo off. I just we think can. That we can. It's just it was hilarious at no, the but, time. But for a game that just the fact that you can even do that with a Nintendo game that doesn't right. filter you at all, I think that game. was rad. But I think also the fact that like this, uh, they cared about it because yeah. sometimes they'll just say, "I wouldn't even count as deals. fuck Konami and move on <laughs> to the next thing," <laughs> and they didn't do that. Oh, you um, would have that on your wall. I um, isn't it swear words. They don't care. No, they, they give zero fucks. Really? Yeah, that's you, what's you, rad you about actually have the much. option to Strange. filter who do you want mm-hmm. to see the pictures, All right, too. Well. No. Fuck. But see, but here's the thing, though. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Matt. Um, do updates count as DLC? Uh, if they're, like, mandatory? I mean... I don't know. Yeah, because you... I mean, or like yeah. expansion, or like should it be like should it be should this be best DLC slash expansion slash update? I guess like an update can sometimes like Dota two just got an update that basically turns it into Dota three. So yeah, that's true. Even though it's an update, it's like okay. a new. I mean, either way, I mean it's off the list. Game. So I, yeah. I didn't look at my phone till now. The update. Yeah, I'm so. sorry. So the next one's a mandatory update. Rainbow Last Six breath. year two. Tell me about that. Yeah. So. Um, I, it, Rainbow Six has been out about a year, and I think on the actual release date, uh, they decided to do this big patch, kind of like. Hmm. Um, and it, I've been playing it here for a few for a few hours now, and it really kind of changed the game in a good way. Um, there was a bunch of like buffs to different operators, a bunch of like debuffs to different operators. Yep. But the way the game kind of plays, the operators feel kind of fresh and new again for the first time in a while. And this in combination with the other kind of updates just periodically throughout the year, there has been major improvements and fixes and things like that to this game that kind of make me keep coming back. And I'm kind of glad I'm revisiting this game again. Yeah, It's really, it's really good. Hmm. I can see that. I mean, I, I, don't, I feel like when it first came out, it got like mixed reviews and a lot of people weren't into it and yeah. um it sounds like this for a lot of people and that is influence. what in yeah. in like a in a in like a year where i make fun of titanfall 2 for losing his player base ubisoft has come out and said that the pl- player base was as high as it ever was like active players in like july Weird. and the game came out in december and it's a combination of the DLC rolling out throughout the the year. Uh, the maps are free. The operators you can buy right away if you want to, or you can use like the in-game currency that you earn through different matches to yeah. buy them. In combination with just the different patches to buff operators, debuff operators, kind of keep them fresh and kind of keep the things balanced as you kind of add the new operators in. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really, it's really been good and there's been a bunch of sales during the summer too so that definitely helped the game out too it sounds like what they did to um was that one game that they presented at e3 that one year um where you are the monster hunters i can't remember the name evolve evolve yeah it sounds like how they made that go free to play and made a bunch of like changes to all the cosmetic stuff to make that like you know uh for profit basically and it brought back the player base. Mm-hmm. Like, everybody's playing that game now. Where it, yeah. Oh, I thought it just got shut down. Yeah, I yep. keep saying, like, patches and buffs and debuffs and balancing changes. But it, the game was never broken. Right, right. There was there might have been, like, one operator that was, like, a little cheeky or whatever that maybe was a little bit too powerful. But the game was never broken. I always enjoyed my time with it from day one. Yeah. Um, it's just nice that they keep updating this. And this big one, I think every operator got touched in some way. Hmm. So, it's pretty cool. Uh, I forgot about something. You adding it? Uh, I kind of had a question about adding something too. Yeah, I think we both agree. It's probably the same thing. It's the uh, baby metal costume for <laughs> Super Mario Maker because <laughs> that came out this year. I was gonna Wait. say the Doom DLC packs. Uh, I never played a Doom DLC pack. Yeah, I didn't either. But I did play Mario Maker with the Baby Metal. So let me get this straight. Sprite. Somehow Baby Metal is in Mario Maker right now. Oh yeah. There's a car in there too. I've got to go home, guys. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Fuck off. That is the coolest thing I've seen. Done. Yes. Done. Their costume. I have, uh, I have uh, 
baby chocolate and rock band. I believe me, I'm a baby metal fan. I for all the right reasons. <laughs> I like the music, <laughs> not because I give a shit about prepubescent women. Uh, I think, I think that might be the winner. Baby metal. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Overwatch it, Halloween. I, it was great. Sombra's a great character. Uh, I think you should add the other updates to that too. What'd I mean, think? yeah. I mean, I just kind of Olympics threw in Rainbow and, Six this year. Olympics and holiday stuff, like the Christmas stuff. I feel like R- Rainbow, it, it did for Rainbow Six, like something that was pretty yeah. necessary and pretty game changing in a way that, like, I, I feel like it's probably the most important update to the game that it's it's on right now. So, I mean, I, I think Sombra's a great addition. But I, you know, I don't know. Overwatch is kind of hard because there's just always going to be content coming out. I don't know. How about this uh, Founders update? It's not. I'll, all I'll say about that is that it's not enough for me to go back to it yet. It sounds amazing. It sounds again game changing, and it sounds Get like they're heading toward fucked. the promise that they made. But it's literally that's the only reason that I like this update is because it's just the promise that they're coming closer to something that they were going to promise us in the first place fair yeah so I, yeah it doesn't really count as best then uh did anyone give a shit about battlefront row one update no okay that's what i thought moving on uh out of here <laughs> should we leave overwatch on here or take it off and just do a winner and a runner-up is me Tim still on the list no no, no. unfortunately okay. it I'd, I'd say leave it on there Leave it on or replace it with Baby Metal and Mario Maker? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> if it was like actually a Baby Metal stage that I could make there. It I'd... is a Baby Metal stage. Fuck you. Fuck everything you're it's, saying. Is you just... know the event courses? <sighs> yeah, but I didn't know. It's one designed to be like a Baby Metal thing. And okay. as you play through and you run okay. as them, when we're you not... hit up, they go like, yeah. Nope, we're not doing this. You're just trying to win me over with your sweet talk. I over. I feel like Overwatch has to be on the list. All right. Do we feel like Rainbow Six or Animal Crossing wins? I think Rainbow Six wins. It sounds like Rainbow Six gives more. I don't know. It's <laughs> You guys battle it out. I mean, like, the most thing with Animal Crossing is, yeah, they made it more convenient. They added happy you know home designers, furniture That's movement true. system. Plus an extra storage locker where you can save a billion items. That's they true. completely made that game totally what it should have been from the start and the next evolution in the series. Okay. And it's probably the only thing we're going to get from them at this point before um, another Animal Crossing comes out. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I I vote Animal Crossing. It was it, it was it, it was the most out of left field. It was the weirdest yeah, I didn't update make... I have ever seen. That's weird. Three said three years. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. super weird. I mean, like we like, we thought this game was dead at what, this point. It, that's one of those things. That, like, you hope that they do that more. I mean, honestly, you hope that there's content support, but yeah, I, I hate the idea that like we're now in a place where you you have the ability to keep up to date with the game and make it fresh and keep people coming back to it. And especially for a game like that, where you yeah, should go in every day. Exactly. Yeah. Like we should be doing that, and no one does it. And for them to just jump in three years later and be like, "Oh, here's all this content. Here's all this like, shit. Oh, wait, Fuck yeah, for free." I, free forgot. I, I asked Wolf Link to move into my town, and he's my best friend now. So I'm going with Animal Crossing. Oh, yeah, Jesus. Anyway, <laughs> Animal Crossing. <laughs> it is, Matt. That's fine. I man. got Rainbow Six on the list. Yeah, I got Overwatch on the list. I'm cool. gonna shit. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Best uh, DLC. Slash expansion, Animal Crossing New Leaf. Welcome, Amiibo. Uh, like the welcome, direct for it too. Amiibo. The direct was amazing too. Yeah, unrelated like to it winning, one. but okay. There was a white background. Yeah, and try to. Somebody all right. Um, Rainbow Six's press release about the update was pretty cool too. Yeah. <laughs> Reading all the bullet points. I don't think I saw the release for Overwatch. So. <laughs> I think it was yeah. leaked. It was probably a leak at that. <laughs> probably. <laughs> we got one more category for today. All right. And then we can all go home and go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Best narrative slash story. Our nominees are Uncharted 4, <laughs> That Dragon Cancer, The Last Guardian, Oxenfree, and Hyper Light Drifter. Here's, here, I'm going to start this off right away. 
What was the story of the Hyperlife Drifter? That's Hyper- what I was about to ask. All right, you ready? Yep, go. <laughs> <laughs> I, Fuck Konami. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, no, I mean, my argument basically is that I love the game. I think it's beautiful. It's universally playable, understandable, without a single line of dialogue. You yes. can get a sense of what's happening, but boy, do you not know what the fuck actually that game Hap- is. is happening. And, like, that's one of those games where, kind of like Bloodborne, yeah. I had to go read forum shit to, like, see people's theories on what happened. I think that this one's one where, like, Bloodborne, there is a story. It just doesn't do a great job of telling you unless you, like, dig through weird things. I would, I would scratch this, it off because of what I said earlier. But this, I feel like you you make the narrative what you want it to be. Sure. And I feel like gameplay dictates that. I feel like secrets that you find dictate that. You know, like, there's clearly, like, to me, what it said was, like, dude is obviously sick going through something. Yeah. Knowing the creator's background, it's definitely some sort of analog to his own life and his heart condition. Um, That's true. But you kind of go through, and the whole idea is, like, trying to get through life with something that's gonna always be there like holding you back sure uh literally in this case um and then ultimately defeating the darkest part inside of you because i feel like this whole game like yeah it's a big journey around this world but like you go within the center Mm -hmm. like kind of a completing pieces of a whole right yeah uh and you go in and you defeat like that weird darkness thing that could be just like the dark spot inside of you and extinguishing and extinguishing that but in doing so you're kind of killing yourself and Jesus then you Christ, just talking about kingdom hearts <laughs> <laughs> we could be but i mean that's that's what i'm saying like it's like i i'm all for like adding the story yourself but there's there's pieces of information in there where where outside of that there's definitely something he's telling you yeah and it's like i love the part where you're figuring it out for yourself and maybe it's up for you to figure it out but i i don't know if it's a strong candidate for that's best, fair. Na- best narrative, especially after I said earlier that narrative takes a backseat. You're yeah. that's fair. You're yeah. say fair. It might, it might, I think it's similar to Inside, and Inside's not as either. Yeah. Where it's like it's up to you to interpret what happened. You can make it kind of go bend it in the way you want it to, but yeah. there's not a clear story that was sent out to be told. Mm-hmm. Unlike yeah. these other games on this list. All right, I'll kill it. Um, I miss you. Bye. Mm-hmm. And I would say another another game that's now on this list oh. that Ooh. I'm not adding it, but I want to mention it because it did the first 15 minutes so well. Doom. Yeah. 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 Doom is just so self-aware. Yeah. Super how self-aware. The, he grabbed that fucking suit. It tells <laughs> you some demonic invasion's happening. Mm-hmm. Some dude starts talking to you. And you're like, fuck you. And you throw the TV across <laughs> the room. Like, that is, that is one of the... One of the better moments of, yeah. of that game and, and the games I've played this year. Good moment. I don't know about the narrative. The the narrative, like I, it, it doesn't matter after that, yeah, but yeah. Kill shit. Especially at the end. The <laughs> end the end got weird. Or, Rip and tear. Yeah. The end was like self aware, but that's another story. Uh Mark. Yep. Depress me. Yeah. <laughs> Make me say it. <laughs> Again, uh, I'm glad I'm that person. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That that dragon cancer. Um. It's the most. It's it's real. Um. Yeah. I mean. That's, I mean, it's yeah. more than just a narrative and a story. It is literally somebody's life. Yep. You are living. Yeah, that's real. Mm. And there's it, even and it's told in a good way, right? Because you it, it is told in such a charming and beautiful way. And and what you said before, and I think you kind of echoed echoed the sentiment of the dude, but like uh, just how you're kind of able to learn something about yourself through experiencing this kid's life. Right. Uh, yeah, like like all of the metaphors that he was going through in his head are mm-hmm. experienced in the game. Yeah, right. Like if he feels like he's drowning, the room that he's in when the doctors are telling him about how untreatable this is water is rising in the yeah. room and you're literally drowning yeah um you know his way of dealing with it is almost hopeless and his wife sees it more optimistic and he thinks that she's 
naive. Yeah, but then right. she proves that she's not naive, that she has a better mindset to go about it. Right. So you see their struggles as a family going through this because he has like three or he has like three other kids. Yeah. And they use their real voice clips. They, you know, they worked on this game together. Um, just everything about it is genuine and the most human thing I've ever played. So for that to hit me and then have that dedication room with all the different greeting cards of people writing to their lost loved ones yeah. from all different walks of life, uh, testimonials mm-hmm. that you find in uh, – it's a paper and a bottle, like a note in a bottle. But when you read it, you're actually listening to the person. Mm. It, it's yeah, this is real. I'm getting chills thinking about fucking, like yeah, it's so fucking. It's more than one story if you think about it, but it's multiple stories helping this one guide along. But yeah, yeah, man, that's yeah. Okay. Top I, of the list. Just fuck it, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> just, I think right. if, if this game should deserve anything, it's definitely that because that's what I'm gonna. The yeah, heart is. I'm gonna agree because. <laughs> Matt, it, Last Guardian. Then I never played it, but that's 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 real. Yeah, I mean, and you can't really a really well told story about the real life suffering, and you know, of innocent of innocent human beings. I mean, yeah. the the human condition. That's yeah. like I'm done. Yeah. I mean, like it's and it's not to say that like you know these other games that don't have that right. going yeah, for them. No, like, no, no. I mean, it can. It, I can see how some people would argue like that's not fair. You know, it's a true story, so it's all no. But this is just but, super like, powerful. I mean, and that's not saying that whatever else that, is but, on here. But the way that they're it's written told just too. as good. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, just, that uh, it's in a league of its own. So what do we cut? Uh, <laughs> Uncharted Four. Uncharted Four has a really good. Narrative. Uncharted Four tells. Two very good narratives. Yeah. One is Nathan Drake's story, and one is the freaking pirate hunt with uh, yeah. Avery's treasure. Avery's treasure is a really good. I'm down it's, with Uncharted Four. I like it. Yeah, and there, the that story. Yeah, yeah. I say yes. Uh, yeah, I think it has the one cliche moment when Sam lie. You find out Sam's been lying to you, and he kind of sort of betrays you, but yeah, he but does it. No, he comes yeah. right back around, and it's not that cliche. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there were every. Every opportunity to be cliche just thwarted itself and was like, nope, we're not going to do that. And then there was just great storytelling moments in the beginning of that game when, you know, you're breaking to that house with Sam, getting for the artifacts. And then later on when Nathan and Elena, they they meet and after, like, this is after Nathan had that fight with Elena about him lying to her about where he's been at, like, the last week week or two. Um, There's that that marital couple fight where they're, like, there's, you can tell there's tension in a room, but whenever Nathan tries to address it, Elaine's like, "No, not now. Like, we, yeah. we got a job to do. Like, yeah. it's so it's so well done and well written up until the very end. And God, I will praise the end of that game till the end of time. All right, I, yeah, it definitely stays. So oxen free. And then I'm gonna try to defend oxen free. Listen, you can defend it. Guardian's it's, it's going up against Last Guardian. That's that's well, the one I might fight a losing battle here. Last Guardian's unique in its way of storytelling because it's, you know, it's not heavy on dialogue. There is dialogue, but, like, it's just to kind of help you go through the game. It, like, the story is kind of very bleak. Like, there's it's not that deep, you know what I mean? Like, it's straightforward, right to the point. Hey, uh, you have to go through here. This is what happens. Um, it's basically it. Uh, mm. Not saying that, I mean, it's done very well, though. So that has it, like... That's only, I think that's what's going for it. Kind of a unique thing about it is when, if you're, like, taking your time at a certain part in a game and maybe you're getting stuck doing something, mm-hmm. um, your older self will narrate what you should do. But it, mm, he says it in a way as if he's telling a story. Huh. So that's it's cool. like... Oh, yeah. And then I got... And then I climbed the tower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something like Interesting. that. Interesting. Or it's like... Or like uh, so I decided to pet the beast to calm him down. Mm-hmm. Something like whatever. I mean, that, that, I, that's... Cool. Yeah, like so. I mean, it's it's not it's not dialogue heavy like these other ones, but it stands out in a way. I don't know, it's, it tells a good story. I mean, like I, I, I'm okay if it if it gets scrapped. I would say that Matt's experience with Oxenfree, from the sound of it, I mean, yeah. I'm still thinking about it, and like I know that Last Guardian has had its moments where like I'm just like holy shit. Yeah. But I I think that story wise, it sounds. Like what Matt went through. Yeah, like Oxenfree gives looks like he gives you more variety. Like you have three different stories that you can choose to experience, mm-hmm. and then that's not even including like the little side things you can do. So the right. gameplay mechanics tune in the radio to yeah. find like yeah. these signals and stuff like that. And 
um, because it's a ritual for these students to go to this island, the party, or whatever. Mm-hmm. They they've messed around with radio frequencies before. It's just one you found you really fucked shit up right. on the island. Right. But they they found these little weird instances of the radio acting up, and they put these little pebbles, uh, like they that's like a marker, like that they just pile up rocks. And whenever you see them, you can tune the radio and found and find mm-hmm. what they did. Hmm. And it kind of starts to give more backstory about what the island was because gotcha. it's um it's like a military base, base that's yeah. like defunct now. And then later on in the game, um, who's the – you? because you've played it so much, I'm going to ask you. Uh, the first 15 minutes, they talk about the woman who who just recently died on the island. Oh, uh, Norman Reedus. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> you. There was, the, there was a, kind of like a caretaker, and her family like ran the island. Um, she – her story comes back around because it turns out that this island was kind of corrupt. Oh. And so like she's hidden – later. You, you can go back and search it for it later in the game when you find out that, that happened. But she leaves like notes and stuff where you can tune the frequencies. <laughs> um, God, this category sucks. Yeah, well, this is too tough. No, th- that's the way I see it. Last Guardian is like a good fairy tale. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's simple but it's beautiful. But like Oxenfree is like a choose your own adventure book, and that to me is more story driven. It's heavier. Yeah, but I feel like Last Guardian. I mean, the game was created to make you feel. The narrative. Yeah. I mean, the narrative is, is through the gameplay. Kind of like Hyperlight Drifter, though. You know? Like, we just had that comparison earlier. Yeah. And we kind of wrote that one off. But Last Guardian is more <laughs> story-driven than Hyperlight Drifter. I said we cut Uncharted. Wow. What? Look at that. <laughs> Look at his face. I mean, For those what? I, I, I have no say Dude, in that field. I think that all of these are really, really strong candidates. They are. But of the four, if we have to cut one, I think Uncharted 4 is the weakest based on the arguments that we've made. No, I'm keeping Uncharted and cutting Oxen for you. That's, that's what I need Damn. to cut. I mean, okay. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with I that. I haven't played either one, so... I just feel like... If I have to are... cut one of the two games I'm voting for here is Oxen Free. All right. Okay, I'm, I'm okay with that, but man, I mean, I, what, what I will say is I was not planning on playing Oxen Free, and now I am because so <laughs> that's like, what I mean. That's like, like that's how much it's affected me. So I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that, but I'm going to play Oxen Free based off of my experience. That's why here. I'm saying like yeah, yeah. That's why I'm saying cut Uncharted because like Uncharted is great. It tells a great story. It does it really, really well. Uncharted is a great but, cinematic story. Mm-hmm. But uh, but like, that regardless, like that's just how good these other three stories are. Yeah. Is that as good as Uncharted Four is? It's still the weakest of these other th- yeah. three. I think it's part of me. That's why I, I appreciate the art book that came with it because the cover looks like a children's book. Yeah. yeah, like a fairy tale thing. I don't know. What do you say? I love that Uncharted story. It's my favorite one of the four. Mm-hmm. And I love that series from... Over Oxenfree? Or... I mean, if we're, if we're keeping The Last Guardian in, and I can't, have a, I can't say yay or nay because I never play the game, I, if I had to cut one of the two games I'm vouching for right now, it's going to be Oxenfree. Mm. It's just Uncharted well, see, sold... Yeah, that's the thing. Like, you and I, we each have a game that we, we didn't play on here. But, like, yeah. but you and Joe... I mean, Joe Kind of played Oxen Free. You both played mm, I would he, call what I did yeah, play. He didn't get he okay. did, one broke it. Yeah. Um I mean I'm I'm fine if Oxen Free gets cut too, I guess. Mm. So that's kind of like biased. Though. For it having not played it. Yeah, that's which is weird. So I I guess because we haven't played it, we I probably mean, like, shouldn't Yeah, we all know that we respect it. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna go off of the person who's all right, it. we'll cut it. Yeah. I mean it doesn't win either way. Best narrative <laughs> uh story is that dragon cancer with runners up uncharted four and the last guardian which brings us to i'm sorry uncharted Four: a thief's end <laughs> like his butt ah it could be <laughs> could be his dick but, i don't know uh, <laughs> it's front end depends on what end yeah uh, that brings us to the end of a bell end. A front day end. four <laughs> of the free cheese game of the year 2016 podcasts let's review today we voted on best single player doom with runners up uncharted for thief's end in the last guardian most innovative the darkest dungeon stress system runners up playstation vr and super hot's time manipulation super hot, hot. our favorite industry moment 
uh, happened with the Nintendo Switch reveal, followed by uh, Sony's E3 press conference and Guillermo del Toro tweeting, fuck Konami. Fuck Konami. <laughs> fuck Konami. Uh, the best DLC or expansion goes to Animal Crossing's New Leaf. Welcome, Animal Crossing New Leaf. Welcome Amiibo update. <laughs> <laughs> you made it. Yes. You did it. <laughs> uh, with runners up, um, Rainbow Six's year two up, Rainbow Six Siege's year two update and Overwatch. Did we say the Halloween update or just overall? I mean, I, that's a Halloween update. Cause Mainly the Sombra. Sombra, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then best narrative story or story uh, goes to That Dragon Cancer with the runners up, Uncharted 4, Thief's End, and The Last Guardian. Woof. Yeah. That's day four. That day four. See you Another guys one. tomorrow. Bites the dust. <laughs> yes. Tomorrow we'll come back with the final round of categories to vote for. All the good ones are here. Best score. Most anticipated 2017. Jesus Christ. And of course, the gloves, elusive gloves game of off. the year. 2016. Uh, <laughs> thank you all for hanging out with us for the last four days. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Dash, for being here. Yeah, man. Uh, I look forward to tomorrow's conversation. Yeah. Uh, and with that, we're out of here until tomorrow. Be sure to go to thefreecheese.com. Check out everything we've been posting all month long, all week long, all of our fun content. And with that, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>